She quit her job, replaced her and her husband's income, and moved to Greece as a full-time Etsy seller. Today, we're talking with Jenny about how she has grown her Etsy shop into a money-generating machine, all through print-on-demand. You guys need to hear her inspirational story as we talk about this amazing opportunity that is literally available for anyone that is willing to take action. So let's dive in now. Cool. Jenny, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me, Cody. Yeah, super happy to have you too. You are a full-time Etsy seller and also educating people on how to sell successfully on Etsy via your TikTok channel. And I think it's just so awesome. Um, tell me more, like, let's jump in. Like, who are you, Jenny? Okay. So, um, yeah, so from my TikTok, I'm Jenny from the shop on TikTok. Um, um, that just kind of happened out of nowhere. I just started sharing my story and people liked it. And then all of a sudden I'm teaching others how to do it, which is awesome. Crazy. And I'm happy to give back um, because there's enough room for everyone at the table um, on Etsy. And I specifically am doing print on demand, um, which is basically I'm designing, making designs for t-shirts, mugs, sweatshirts, um, and putting them on a mock-up, listing them on Etsy. When somebody purchases my listing, it's synced to the printing company and then the printing company prints it and ships it for me. So I'm not touching any inventory or anything like that. Basically all I'm doing is the design, the designing on my iPad or on my laptop and um, doing the back end stuff on Etsy. And that's pretty much it. And then customer service, of course, but of course. there's not a ton with, with that. So. Um, wow, that's amazing. That's like a very detailed answer. Honestly, way more than I was expecting. So that's super um, awesome. I mean, you literally just broke down your entire process, right? Of like, yeah, yeah, basically you know. that's like it in a nutshell. Absolutely. And that's the super powerful thing. I mean, of Etsy and of just selling online in general, of course, is that the work is up front and yeah. you basically, after that, it's almost passive, would you say, or, or what's your thoughts? Yeah, yeah that's the, been the coolest part about it. Um, so I'm actually, it's been about two years this month, I would say. And my first okay. year I worked really hard. I saw that, saw it as a big opportunity and I like looked up to a couple of different people that I found on YouTube and I just watched their videos and kind of taught myself how to do it. Um, and it was like kind of slow rolling at first, like the first couple of months, but like I, as the sales started coming in, I'm like, whoa, this really works. Like <laughs> it was blowing my mind, you know, like the, I th think it was like by like the second month I could like pay my car bill and, and I was like, what? Like, that's insane, you know? And, you know, I was a teacher too on the side, but it was nice to have this like little side income coming in. And then the more it started rolling, I was like, I'm going to be able to quit my teaching position from this. And it did become more passive the more I uploaded um, new listings on the Etsy and it kind of just compounds over time and like snowball effects. I put in a lot of work my first year because I knew that I was going to be able to, you know, make that happen and where right. I could quit my job. I just knew it was only a matter of like practicing, getting better, uploading more things. And like one shirt can make you thousands and thousands of dollars every month, you know, like all it takes is one listing. So like you just keep swinging the bat and listing. And some shirts might only make you 30 bucks a month, you know, but there's going to be one that makes you that extra thousand every single month. It just like compounds every That's time. Amazing. I could go on and on about that because it's like the coolest thing. And now, you know, I continue to make more money each month, but I'm putting in less work because I have almost 4,000 listings on my Etsy shop. Crazy. So like I put in the time, you know, I did the work up front, like you said, and then now it kind of just speaks for itself and continues to flow. And yeah, it's not passive because you know, there's sure. the um, customer service and like every now and then like printing issues, but I'm working on it like 20, to, oh, sorry, 20 to 30 minutes a day, I would say, if that, so. Yeah, that's amazing. Honestly, that's so inspiring for, for so many people to hear, right? The fact that there's so many things in there that I want to kind of pull out. Um, one, you yeah. have a full-time job. You were, you were a teacher. Or it sounded like, I don't know if it was full-time. Was it full-time? Yeah, I was a kindergarten teacher. Kindergarten teacher, yeah. For eight years. <laughs> so cool. And you basically, you had this, you started learning something about this online thing and about this Etsy thing. You basically researched best, probably the best way to do this. You started following people that were actually doing it, modeling maybe after their, some of their success. 
yeah. didn't reinvent, you know, the wheel too much. You basically applied with what they were teaching to your niche and your skill set and yeah. executed really, 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 really well. Yeah, for sure. And like, this isn't something like, I just kind of like fell into it too, which was kind of cool. Um, I like, I knew I wanted to quit my teaching position. My family and I wanted to move to Greece. I knew in order to do that, I needed a job online or like some kind of way to get money um, without being stuck in one yeah. spot. So that was like my initial thought. And I didn't even know about like e-commerce yet or like I knew of Etsy, but I thought I had to be like hands on with it, you mm -hmm. know, which a lot of people do really well being hands on. But sure. for my lifestyle, I wanted to be able to be free. Yep. Um, so that was my starting point. And I actually wrote a book and I published it on Amazon KDP. Awesome. And it, when I was researching how to um, advertise that book. I fell down the rabbit hole of YouTube and that's how I came into like the Etsy stuff. And I was like, I'm going to start a t-shirt shop <laughs> out of nowhere. It was like right in the beginning of the pandemic too. And I had like a two week break from work because our school shut down. So I was like, yeah. So I ordered like four to $500 worth of supplies. I ordered a cricket machine, t-shirts, like the ink, everything. And then I was like, all right, I jumped into YouTube to learn about how to make an Etsy t-shirt shop. And I found um, the life hacker couple who are now my mentors and yep. friends and awesome. changed my life. Um, and they were like, yeah, you, you don't have to touch a single product. Like the printing company does it. And I'm like, what? So I ran over to my Amazon cart and deleted my, I canceled my order. Um, and then I just like hit the ground running from there and kind of like took off pretty fast. Wow. That, that is so amazing. That's like literally the modern day entrepreneurship right there. Right. It's like you can do all of this without touching a piece of inventory. Like you can just use your laptop, right? It's a lifetime laptop type of lifestyle mm -hmm. and you can live in, you said you mentioned you live in Greece. Yes. We Tell us more about that. What's that? Tell us more about that. Okay. So, um, my husband's family, his grandparents and his father were born in Greece. And then they came over to the States to like make a better living. Um, and then, but he still has a lot of cousins and family over there. And then over time, like we just started visiting over our summers and we're like, we want to stay here for good. Um, but it was hard because our jobs kept pulling us back here. Uh, so basically that's when I finally like, you know, I wasn't really aligned with teaching anymore mm -hmm. and was like, we need a change for myself and for my family. And so that's why I just like hit the ground running with the e-commerce stuff. And then, um, we were able, I was able to quit my teaching position last June and we moved to Greece in July. Oh my gosh, right now we're back in the States visiting some family, but we're heading back soon to Greece. So it's wow. been, it's been surreal because it happened so fast and like, Etsy is what allowed me to change my life this fast. Pretty, like, I don't want to say effortlessly, um, cause I put in a lot of yeah. like hours, you know, and, um, I didn't give up when like times were slow. So it took like a lot of like, um, mindset I would say, but it was so worth it to just grind that first year, you know? And then I would have never thought I'd be where I am right now. If somebody told me like, if you start an Etsy shop today, like you're going to be able to move to Greece next year. Like, no, I, there's no way my head could, I still can't even believe that it's happening. You know? That's so amazing. I mean, but the 4,000 listings that you say you have, yeah. that is like, <laughs> it's, it's literally yeah. proof that it takes so much work, it, you know, yeah. upfront. You know, right. and you pay yeah. your dues. Yeah, and like so, out of those four thousand listings, not every single one one of them sells. Yeah. You know, but it might. Like, there's some that I put up my first year that never sold until recently. Like, I I also feel like the higher you get up in the algorithm, like the more sales that you make, the more you like Etsy will show your shop too, yeah. because like beginning listings that never sold are now selling. Like the higher up I get. Um, and that could be partially maybe because you're driving so much traffic to your shop and maybe they're searching around your store yeah. too sometimes. And Yeah, it could be that. But also I will say, and like Everbee does play a role in this, um, is like I go back and look at my older listings when I like wasn't fully aware of SEO yet, like mm -hmm. the search engine op op optimization. Yep. For anyone who doesn't know what that means, yep. that means like your titles and tags in your Etsy listing 
Um, so I wasn't really properly titling my listings and they were like decent, pretty good designs in my opinion. <laughs> And they weren't selling, but when I, sometimes when I go back in and I'm like, oh my goodness, like that SEO is atrocious. <laughs> and then I use Everbee and I've been switching out my older SEO, my older titles and tags, and it's working. I've been making sales on listings that have never sold before because wow. my SEO wasn't good. That's wild. I, I, there's so much there. Like, so let's, let's keep going with there though, right? Is so many people want to jump into the t-shirt world or, you know, on demand world but the common thing common objection that we always hear is how competitive it is or how saturated it is and how there's no way to be found in search and how do you rank this thing what is your process for like from start to finish right you have an idea or maybe you don't even have an idea like you want to basically you want to grow sales and how do you do that um so there's a lot of little factors that play into it um I would say like I'm trying to think because like it happens differently each time like so I'm very observant when I'm out and about like I look at other people's shirts um, like maybe in like Target I'm like looking to see like what they're selling like what kind of style is it like a retro time mm -hmm. or you know like what's trending right now is important um, so coupled with like all different niches. So like my shop has like hundreds of different niches in it. That's the other cool thing about me. <laughs> and like some of my friends that do this is because a lot of people will tell you you have to niche down and have Always. one niche, which I do believe is true. If you're selling like succulents in your Etsy shop, you should stick to like succulents or plants. Like you're selling those, right? If you're selling wood signs, like you should stick to wood signs. But in for print on demand like my niche is like t-shirts it's like apparel you know t-shirts yeah. sweatshirts, mugs but then the designs that i'm putting on that big broad niche is all different types of designs you know so i i make like a list a lot of times um if i'm trying to brainstorm something to, to design so you want to design for everyone it's not for you because you're not the one buying your shirt, right? Business is about serving other people. So you want to make a list of like, maybe all the people in your life and their profession. So so-and-so is a teacher, so-and-so is a firefighter. This person's a great grandmom, you know, like thinking of all the different labels that people have in your life and making a list. And then you're going to go design for them. So like, all right, I'm going to do, what would Jen like when she was a teacher? Like what shirt, would she wear, you know, or mm -hmm. um, a nurse, nurse shirts, or a, a lot of professions and labels sell really well. So like mom, like mom shirts, um, dad shirts, you know, people like to express themselves by, by wearing their shirts. So a lot of times they're buying for themselves to show that their profession or that they're mom or grandma, or they're buying a gift for somebody. And typically they're like, oh, what do they do or what are they like? Um, so that's kind of how I wrap my head around like where to, who to design for basically. And then you kind of think of the trends, like I could do like a retro-y font or, you know, just a basic font, minimalist font. You got to think of different aesthetics too, because like I might like a retro shirt, but you might not, right? But say we're both teachers. So like it's important to like design and different aesthetics as sure. well so if i like think of a cute saying for a teacher shirt i might make it three different ways like a retro style a minimalist style and just like a big bold font or something sure. like yeah, you're three making versions like three different yeah. types of versions of the same type of product maybe it's one qu quote that you really feel like resonates well with yeah. like your teacher friend but maybe the fonts you make three different versions of the fonts of yeah that way you're hitting like not just one person like i like to think of it as like avatars like you're not hitting just one teacher avatar you're hitting like three different teachers you know exactly. everybody has different um has different things yeah exactly no, I totally agree. Okay, so let's say, let's take the next so my, Basically, my head is like a tornado when I'm like about to design, yeah. but like these are kind of like all the thoughts that are going in my head. 
what I'm about to design. If that makes I love sense. it. No, <laughs> okay. no like, straightforward answer. <laughs> so if you, let's say, you, but we got so much out of that, right? So summarize that piece is you, you basically formulate ideas by thinking of different people in your groups and your, in your life, you mm-hmm. design for them, you make out some designs for them. And then you create basically, let's say you make one quote on a shirt, for example, and you basically make three different versions of that same quote, depending on just, just depending on like the avatars, you know, of the mm-hmm. people that would potentially buy that. Okay. So let's yeah. say you take that shirt now, those three listings, and now you want them to be listed. And obviously we all want to be ranked, you know, for high and in, in demand, you know, search terms. What is your process for that? Um, so I like to look for, so I'll, I'll have my design, right? Say I need, um, a shirt for a nurse, right? Okay. So I go to the Etsy search and I'll type in nurse shirts or shirt for nurse, you know, just a general thing. Okay. And then a bunch of listings are going to pop up from all different sellers. And I look for ones that have the best seller badge and when they have the best seller badge, that means that it's sold lots of times. Um, so I click onto it and then if it has 20 in the cart and like over 10 reviews, I know that this is actively selling right now. Mm-hmm. This is good SEO. It's in front of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will take their title and paste it into mine. I will tweak a couple things like say, their shirt said like um er nurse but mine is just is for all like not the er right (laughs) Mm -hmm. um i'll take out like emergency room well you know what emergency room nurse could still work for it because a nurse i'm getting too deep right now but if there's like a quote on the shirt and they put that in the title i'm not going to use that in my title because i don't have that quote on my shirt so So you use your brain you mean you think about this yeah yeah so then i'll just like substitute those couple words with some keywords that i think would fit well in there um and then i take the tags from their listing and paste them into my tag. So now I have best selling SEO on my listing. Perfect. Yeah. And you literally, okay, so pulling that out is you're finding a top selling product that's relevant to yours Mm -hmm. and you're modeling after their success. Yeah, and I wanna make it clear too, like you don't copy their designs. Like it's best to, it's actually best to like have your design ready first. And then go looking for the SEO because you don't want to like, it's okay to get inspiration from other sellers and look at their designs and then get an idea of what to design. But there's like a fine line that people cross sometimes with like, like too much inspiration from it. And it ends up looking like it's copied, whether like you think that or not. So just to stay in integrity with this, I say it's best to design first and then go and look for your best selling SEO. So you're not like, like messing with any sure. other sellers listings, you know? Yeah, I certainly, I agree. Yeah. It's certainly like we want to keep the marketplace like healthy and we, in, and when you're copying some other people's list items, designs, it's not like, it's not a good way to do long-term sustainable business and it's not good for anybody. It kills us all. So um, I agree with that for sure. And the other piece of that too, is like, if I, so say that shirt, best selling shirt said ER nurse, and I made one that looked just the same and use their SEO, like why you, then you're really competing with like the best person for that listing. And like Etsy's going to recognize that and not really like boost your listing. Like the best seller is just going to continue to be the best seller for that design. So it's best to be original and put your own creativity into your designs, but then use the best selling SEO. Because if they if they put their they might have a great design, but then their title might have just said ER nurse. Mm-hmm. When they could be packing it with 140 characters that can help them be seen. You know, so like that title is so important. That's why I go and I search for the best selling ones. I love it. I agree. And uh, shameless plug, right? They could use Everbee to basically find those top revenue products. Yeah. You, you could do it your way, right? Which is basically like look for the people in the cart or the most people in the cart and then yeah. reviews. And there's but also- I'll tell you, like, so I did, I did it that way for the longest time and clearly it worked. Like I'm mm-hmm. successful from this. Sure. 
ever since I started using Everbe, I'm like, oh my gosh, because there's a lot of best sellers out there, you know, but like it really, Everbe really helps show you like which ones are bringing in the money the most, like, and monthly. Oh, yeah. And it's been like hitting gold. I feel like <laughs> ever since I started using Everbe, I'm like obsessed with it. It's, it's really a great great product for sure that's awesome um, yeah i feel like it's like there's always ways to do things like without ever be right like there, of course yeah. but yeah. it's just slower you know and th yeah. it'll save you it'll it'll save you time and then it's also like so it's faster and it's a lot of times it's more validated i think that's that's so you're making sure. faster decisions with better data that's kind of like the whole point of ever be so like that's cool to like i hear that yeah yeah, it's like being able to see the behind the scenes, you know? And also I love just being able to copy all the tags with one click and then paste them in my thing, my listing with totally. one click. Like, I mean, it's kind of silly. It saves me like, what, like two to three minutes, but that adds up with all those <laughs> minutes for 4,000 listings. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah, it's been great. That's awesome. Cool. Um, okay. So if someone were to ask you like, hey, how do you actually rank though? Is there a way to like rank faster or a strategy that gets you ranked or like what is your thought process around that um, you know i don't really know like i haven't i don't do anything outside of the etsy platform like i like etsy does off-site ads so they do that for me without i can't once you make over ten thousand dollars like you can't opt out of that mm -hmm. which you know there's pros and cons to etsy ads for sure and that's like a whole nother story sure. um but because of the offsite ads, I just, I don't even run any ads on my own oh, interesting. Etsy or on any social media platforms. I rely solely on my SEO and that's been working for me. Maybe I could be much bigger than I am if I did an Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest, sure. but for my lifestyle, like I like to just this is working now and I'm living comfortably and continuing to, to grow. So I haven't looked into like outside things, um, which is kind of cool and inspiring, I think, in a sense for people. Mm -hmm. Cause like when I first started, I was like, I don't want to start social media for this. Like yeah. I didn't want to bother my family members. Like my family and friends don't even know my shop name, just my husband and my parents and like my That's brother. Cool. Like, because I don't want to bother people. And like I said earlier, you know, I'm creating for all different people. So like, if I showed my friend my shop, they'd be like, what, what is all this? Like, you know, it's like, so um, I, well, you know, to answer your question about ranking, like I feel like with print on demand to hit all the different niches, to try to rank maybe in, um, like a low hanging fruit niche mm -hmm. to try to get your get some steam into your shop and then um eventually like hit the bigger niches no i think that's that's cool i mean what i'm hearing though is like there's not like a, a magic pill to be ranked right. so, no you know yeah. i think that i get that question a lot is and you probably do too is hey how do i get ranked in etsy you know and it's such a hard term or hard question to answer because there's like right. a million i know that's why i was just like rambling because yeah. i really don't have an answer for it like, that's good and i don't have an answer too honestly i'm searching for that magic yeah. pill also which i don't think exists um i think it's a combination of you know like creating a great design original design that's maybe based on some inspiration but you know yeah. you know it's going to sell you have a confidence that it's going to sell yeah. uh, you put a great mock-ups together you put great images in there video in there in your listing whatever mm -hmm. optimize it yeah. Put a great description together, you know, put a good title together and tags together, push it to the Etsy algorithm and let Etsy run with it. Yeah. And Etsy will rotate you on, onto the first page for some of those in-demand search terms. And when you get your chance, when they ro rotate you, mm -hmm. hopefully your listing performs well and converts. Yeah. And then now Etsy says, Hey, this listing is doing well. Like, let's show it again. And they yeah. rotate you again. And then you do well again, and then they pretty soon you get stuck in rank. Yes, yes, that makes complete sense um, for sure. And I've noticed like when I get a bestseller, um, a lot of times I will be like, okay, this is in demand, or like people like the, my design style for this for whatever reason. So I will make like ten other designs of that niche and use that same SEO 
and that helps me as well. Like, Wait, so break I, that down for me. Can you say that again? Yeah. So, okay. Um, say I'm like, oh, I just got a bestseller badge on this shirt. Okay. I then, whatever it was, let's say it's like a plant mom shirt or something. Okay. Um, don't use plant mom because I'm pretty sure that's trademarked. <laughs> Anybody who's watching this. Um, but like, let's just say it's a plant mom shirt. Um, I'll then make like 10 more different designs in that niche mm. and put that those shirts up with that best selling SEO from my shop. And I, I do really well with that. Like that's interesting. Some of my newer ones will become bestsellers too. And I don't know if that has to do with like, because they like the relevancy of it coming from my shop or I don't know. Like basically I always tell people to like, whatever starts selling in your shop, you want to build off of that. Like that. for whatever reason, that's what Etsy is showing from your shop to people. So if you, your first shirt was a firefighter shirt and you, aren't into firefighting or like you don't know anything about it like get researching and making designs in that niche if you sell like two shirts two or three of the same design then start building off of that niche i love that it supports so much in what i believe too is like w do more of what's working now yeah right? that's that's the key exactly. and, mm -hmm. like just do more of what's working now and double down on it and it's yeah. obviously working um cool so let's move over to maybe some other things because this can go forever. I'm sure. Uh, what about like, what's like an average conversion rate? I get this question a lot. Like, Hey, what's like an average conversion rate for Etsy? What should I be targeting? Is mine too low? Is it too high? What are you seeing? So honestly, honestly, Cody, it's like embarrassing, but I don't even pay attention to the conversion okay. rate and I probably cool. should. Um, I don't know what a good conversion rate should be. I don't even know what mine is. Maybe I should like pay, take note of that more. No, I mean, it, honestly, like I get that question a lot. And again, like I, anytime that anybody upgrades to ever be at the moment, at least I invite them to a Zoom call. So I get to like hear there. And like, that's honestly the answer for the majority of sell, not the majority, a lot of sellers that are doing like $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year on Etsy. Like they, they don't really pay attention to that either. Yeah, um, I don't know. I guess I don't like, Maybe in the beginning, I would have paid attention to something like that. But yeah, once you get rolling, it's like, well, whatever I'm doing is working. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But maybe I should look into that more so I can like be helpful to other people who are wondering that. So we'll totally. have a conversation about that. Yeah. And I guess for anybody that's watching, right, is like the average that I see based on my conversations and stuff across a lot of different industries on Etsy um, is, is probably around the 2% target two percent conversion rate target um some upwards of like six percent depending on if it's like a you know not a very competitive niche um mm -hmm. and then up downwards towards you know 0.8 percent conversion rate and like probably like a t-shirt world is probably like a lower just because you have more competition um mm -hmm. but uh yeah and i think anything around that is common and i think that what i've seen is if you're below kind of those averages, if you feel like you're low, it's the major, there's a reason for it. And the reason is probably something like your images, right? Which is, has the highest impact on your conversion rate. So, you know, any reviews, right? Images and reviews, if your conversion rate is lower. There's levers you can pull to get that back up to industry standard. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I believe like there's so many little factors that play in being successful with this, but the cool thing is it's most of the time just like small little tweaks that you need to do. Like I've been doing shop reviews for people and cool. I'm noticing like, I'm like, I'll see a page and they'll have a bunch of great designs, but like no sales. And I get so excited because I'm like, all you have to do is this, this, and this. Like there's only a couple little tweaks mm -hmm. that I know like will just propel them forward and that's the cool thing like as long as you like study it a little bit deeper and practice it or like hire help like you're right around the corner from making sales i love that it's just the small little tweaks mm -hmm. compounding over time yeah you need to optimize continue to make be better every day and you will like pretty soon like like you said snowball right it's yeah and like the crazy thing is like i didn't have any background with graphic design or anything like that like i used to paint for fun but nothing crazy like anyone can really do this um if they want to have the mindset to like practice and like don't give up and like i you know for being as successful as i am now like i'm still looking back at listings that i put up like six to eight months ago and i'm like jenny what were you thinking like 
that mock-up is horrible and no wonder it didn't sell or like, whoa, your SEO, like, you know, and I'm like, how am I where I am right now? <laughs> like, no, but not, but like certain, my, I yeah. look back at my beginning listings though, honestly, you know, cause I do the manual renew on Etsy so that I can like, once a day I go in and look at my expired listings and like tweak them. Like I said earlier, I mostly check the SEO and stuff, but lately some of my older ones are coming up and I'm just making a couple tweaks to them. Nothing major. It's just what I've learned over time. And yep. they end up selling within like the next week, some the next day. And I'm like, that's, it's crazy. Just like you can have a really great design, but your mock-up might be like ugly. <laughs> I don't even yeah. like that word, you know, but like yeah. you have you, like, or you can have a really great design and your SEO is bad. Like SEO, it's like, when you walk, if you walked into like an unorganized library, like you're not going to find the book that you're looking for. It might be a really great book, but you're not going to find it if the titles are like all over the place, you know? So that's the same thing with Etsy is like, you might have a really great product, but nobody's going to see it if you're naming it like Starburst or something, you know, like Starburst flower, like nobody's going to find your beautiful design. <laughs> Yep, I love that. that. Title, it's got to be like more basic, like flower T-shirt, botanical yep. shirt, like things like that. Do you feel um, like Do you feel like people, um, a lot of sellers, almost overcomplicate the SEO strategy a little much? Right, I see it a lot. Is like, oh, your SEO needs to be like more better and more optimized, and yeah, uh, like just more everything. When really, it's like, it maybe doesn't have to be that complicated. I guess. What are your thoughts? 100% like mm -hmm. I just came out of that mindset like I'd say in the last couple months I'm like why did I make it so hard mm -hmm. you know like and I figured it out over the way over, like along the way but like I made it so hard like some of my begin like it, it some of my beginning listings I just had like no clue you know mm -hmm. and because you feel like I don't like you said like I don't know why we make it that difficult. Yeah. I think because it's like, we can't believe that something is so easy or simple. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I can't wrap my head around I it. Feel but like, I, I feel like it's partially because I don't know if, if we just got back to like the fundamentals of, Hey, what is the point of the title? And what is the point of the tags? Yeah. And the point is to tell Etsy what my thing is. Yeah, basically. that is the only the, that's the only point of that whole thing, right? Yeah. So if we just look at that, then it's like, okay, my job is to tell Etsy what my listing is. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and to like also get into the mind of the buyer, you right. know. So all right, say I have a bride shirt. Okay, so like, who's the person that's going to be buying this shirt? It's either a bride, yep. somebody who's about to get married. Or it's like a bridesmaid that's searching for a bride shirt for their friend or like, you know, and what are they going to type into the search to find a bride shirt? Yeah. They're going to, they're not going to be like, um, they're not going to be like whimsical fairy bride shirt, you know, like yeah. they're not going to, so they're going to be like bride t-shirt or like gift for bride. Yeah. Very simple. And whatever people are putting in that search at the top of Etsy whatever if you have that in your tags then your listing is going to be an option for them exactly i love that um so you you mentioned etsy ads and how you don't use etsy ads i know you don't do anything other than just the offsite ads i guess but yeah so um i've tried etsy ads before yeah. and then i don't know like they worked for me but i felt like i was more like balancing out with the amount I was spelling, um, with the amount I was spending and the amount I was making, mm -hmm. which was fine in the beginning because it helped me like build my shop. So as long yeah. as I like didn't spend too, like over the amount that I made, then I was okay with it in the beginning. But I then yeah. once I started getting bigger and they were promoting my stuff on offsite ads, like on Google and Facebook and Instagram, I was like, I'm just paying too much um in ads to etsy you know from their just their off-site ads that i didn't have a choice in so i stopped doing um the other ads but i know people who are successful with with doing the etsy ads as well but i just i don't know 
I didn't have enough time to like dissect it. And yeah, I think it's kind of down to like, you know, your lifestyle or what you feel like is, is okay. Right. Like, yeah. can we always be bigger? Can we always be better and faster and yeah, all these things? Yeah, of course. Right. But, um, but it works for your life the way that you have it set up right now. Yeah. It works perfectly for your life. But my, I do have one piece of advice with ads. No, um, don't, I would say don't ever put an ad on anything that hasn't sold at least like three times. Mm, tell me why. Go ahead. Um, okay. Because this could have to do. All right. So if you put an ad on a listing that's never sold before, mm-hmm. it might not convert well because you might not have the correct SEO for it or for whatever reason. Yep. So my idea of the Etsy ads is like, you're fueling the fire. So if I have a shirt that just sold three times in the past couple of days, I know my SEO is working for me. I know it's a good design. I know people like it. So I'm going to feed the fire by putting some money into the yeah, ad yeah. and putting it on the ad. If you're putting um, an ad on a shirt that's never sold, you might be pushing it out to more people that it doesn't fit right with. Does that make sense? So. Yes. That's my, my eyes on it. I'm not sure if like that's correct, but I don't think there's a correct or incorrect. I think it's like, that's an interesting perspective. And I totally see that, especially if you're for the more budget, budget cautious, you know, seller that um, doesn't have a big budget to, you know, invest in ads. Like that is something that they need to be very efficient with their capital. They need to be efficient with their cash. Um, Whereas like, a lot of sellers too that I know is like, they want data. They want the feedback of data yeah. you know, faster. So they're willing to like lose the money pushing the ad just to for see sure. if it converts well at all. If it doesn't convert, then they shut the ad off anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I know sellers that do that too. So it's interesting. It's a really good point though. Right. To that point, if someone is thinking about Etsy ads, then they I would probably suggest like, hey, pick like maybe top two, three listings or something like that. Yeah. Group them, yeah. run them for seven days, you know, right. for budget and shut off the ones that aren't working over after seven days, after seven days, measure them. If they're not breaking even then shut them off. Um, and then do that same, do a bat, do another batch and find, find a winner in there. That's, that's my suggestion. Yeah. That sounds good to be like on top of it and have a game plan for sure. Totally. Yeah. I find that people, they, they, um, they don't know their profit margins. They don't know really the numbers at all with that. And then they run ads to it and they're like, they could be just like literally throwing money in the trash just because yeah. they don't know that their profit margin is 30%. And, right. you know, like they just don't know what their margins are. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. Um, where can, this has been super, I mean, we could talk all day, but like, where can people learn more about you and follow you and hear more of your strategies and fundamental stuff? That's you. Right now it's just on TikTok, Jenny from the shop with two P's. So S H O P P. Um, and I'm in, I'm, you know, thinking about maybe a YouTube channel down the road, but right now all of my information is on there and I try to jump on and do some lives every now and then. And then I have some, um, options for people to sign up for a one-on-one with me, um, or an Etsy shop review and, um, a couple other like courses and stuff in my bio on my TikTok. So that's the best place for them to learn more from me. I love it. And I will link to all that stuff in the description in the, in the video. And, um, but yeah, Jenny, thank you so much for coming on. It's seriously super inspiring. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah. It's been great. Thank you, Cody. I so appreciate Jenny coming on. Be sure to check out her TikTok in the description below where she shows more free strategies and tips on actually growing your Etsy shop. Um, Second, if you're not using Everbee yet, go sign up for free in the description below. You guys need to be using data to make decisions in your business. Okay. Find the best products to sell on Etsy with Everbee. And finally, uh, curious, what did you guys learn from today's conversation with Jenny? Was there any big takeaways that really made a difference for you? Uh, Comment down below. Let us know. Honestly, very, very curious about this. Um, Really appreciate you guys watching the video and I'll talk to you soon.